What up, film fanatics? As most of you know, the Oscars were last night, and there was some huge things that happened in the film world. A lot of good actors, actresses, directors, producers, writers winning some great awards, and Gio and I are here to discuss them. I'm your host, Jacob Bartley, and this is Apocalypse Movies, and this is our 2016 Oscar recap podcast. And I'm, like I said, I'm joined today by Gio Ramos. What's up, Gio? How you doing, man? Good. You finally won. About time, Leo. I know, right? Congratulations to Leonardo DiCaprio. He's my favorite actor of all time, but I actually didn't pick him to win this year. I think he deserves to win, and I'm not obviously. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy that he won, but I actually had Fassbender taking it this time. Um, we 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 played a pretty a pretty fun game last night. We picked like uh, the top like nine categories, and we had a you know had a little fun competition going on. Um, so I kind of picked Fassbender just to you know go away from the crowd, but. Anyways, so as most of you know, Chris Rock hosted the Oscars last night. And before we jump into the categories, Gio, I just want to ask you, as the show overall, did you enjoy it? And do you think Chris Rock did a great job? Yeah, I did enjoy the show. Um, Chris Rock did a phenomenal job considering uh, what he was being faced with, you know, with all the controversy, the Oscars so white, people asking him to step down, all the boycotting. I thought he did a good job. He came out, you know, guns blazing, uh, immediately addressed, you know, the problem in Hollywood. And then he kept putting it in our faces. And as uncomfortable as that may have been at times, it's very important because he has a stage in front of millions of Americans. And they need to know uh, what's going on in Hollywood, the diversity issues and all that. I thought he did a great job. There were a couple moments where I was just like, you know what and you know just like the uh the stacy stacy dash moment the girl scout cookies kind of went on a little bit too long but you know that was cool um so overall i thought you did a great job and uh i'd be curious to see who hosts next year yeah i i did like the show overall i thought it was a bit more entertaining than last year's show I mean, even though i love neil patrick harris um you know he didn't do as good of a job as chris rock did this year i've actually I've always been a fan of Chris Rock, but ever since that movie Top 5, man, I I have a newfound respect for him. I think he's a genius for directing and writing that film, and I was really excited to see him host. I thought he did a great job. I thought he, you know, pretty much every, most of his jokes were addressing the Oscar so white, the, you know, the diversity issue, and, um, you know, you would think that beating you over the head like that would get annoying, but the way he went about doing it, he was funny, he wasn't insulting, and he wasn't trying to preach to us too much. And I actually liked his point of view on the whole thing. He was explaining that, yeah, we're, you know, we're boycotting this Oscars or, you know, causing all this controversy around this Oscars. But, you know, our race has gone through much worse things, and this really doesn't matter. But it's, you know, it just so shows how far the world has come. And, you know, there's still not, you know, complete, uh, you know, there's not, there's still not. The diversity issue is not fixed in Hollywood for sure, but you know this whole Oscars controversy is definitely a good step in that direction. So, anyways, well, we're here to talk about the winners of the Oscar awards. Um, there was some some great races going on, but ultimately the winners won. So let's start off with the big one. Let's start off with bit Best Picture, Gio. Uh, you know we both actually predicted Spotlight to win. So, you know you had the Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Mad Max, The Martian. Reverend Room and Spotlight and Spotlight took took the crown directed by Tom McCarthy great cast uh how did you feel about Spotlight winning best picture I thought it was the right pick um you talk about an ensemble the story uh, how it all just comes together and you know for me it, it was Spotlight um now the way some of the awards were going during the night it kind of maybe you know gave the impression that other films like uh at one point i thought mad max was gonna upset and then um at another point i thought the revenant would take it but then it went to a spotlight which deservingly so you know for reasons i just mentioned so i thought it was the right pick yeah i totally agree with you i chose it for a reason i in in my personal opinion i liked room a little bit more than spotlight but it was just more t my type of film but i do ultimately think spotlight is the best movie on this list for for sure, and I'm very happy that it won. I I didn't think The Revenant was that great. I thought it was really good, but not Best Picture worthy. And I had a, I thought it was gonna win when Alejandro won Best Director and Leo won Best Actor. I was like, holy crap, it's gonna sweep. It's gonna take 
Best Picture, and it didn't, and I'm glad about that. So great job for Spotlight. Great job, Tom McCarthy. Great job, the writers and that whole entire cast. So now to the one everyone was talking about prior to the Oscars, during the Oscars, and today is Leonardo DiCaprio finally winning his Oscar, Gio. How, how do you feel about this? You're, you're a DiCaprio fan. Does this make you happy that he finally got his Oscar? Oh, yeah, I think all of America was happy. If you look at the social media reaction to Leo finally winning, and I guarantee you, like, half of those people out there in social media haven't even seen these other performers here. They just wanted Leo to win because True. for some reason this year we felt like he needs to get his Oscar. Like, if he doesn't get it this year, like, there's a chance he may never get it or there's something wrong with the Oscars. And it wasn't Leo's, one of his greater performances. We've seen him give better performances, but considering how physically demanding and mentally demanding this role was um besides michael fassbender like this was his best chance at winning this year and he took it i couldn't be any more happier i think we all kind of knew in the back of our minds that leo was gonna get it yeah i that's a great point the mental and physical challenge of this role like all these roles has meant all of these roles had mental challenges but leo took the physical challenge to a whole nother level and um you know, it resulted in a great performance. Like, if he did that and it was an okay performance, then it would all be for nothing. But everything he did led to his great performance. So I'm more than happy that he won. I, I'm I'm so happy that he won. I, I did think Fassbender was going to take it, but ultimately Leo won. And his speech was actually pretty funny to me. Like, it, you know, he thanked all the people, and then he spent more time talking about the environment and stuff like that, which is – awesome like i i love that he cares about that stuff and he's actually you know taking time to uh you know, address it but um it's funny because they kind of played everyone else off of the stage and leo got to talk for like a couple minutes which deservingly so you know this right. was his moment this was his night so definitely so all right moving on to the best actress winner a sacramento native brie larson won best actress for the room she did a phenomenal job. I thought she was the favorite all year. I definitely believe she should have won. The only competition I think she would have had, had if Alicia Vikander should have been in this category for the Danish girl. And if that was the case, maybe Alicia Vikander takes this category. But she wasn't. She, Brie Larson beat out Blanchett, beat out Cersei Ronan. She won. How do you feel about this? Uh, awesome. You know, Brie, Brie Larson has been getting, uh, you know, buzz for her performance ever since the first viewings for Room oh, yeah. came out from the critics. Even with a category like that includes names like Kate Blanchett and Jennifer Lawrence, Brie Larson still stood above the rest. Um, it was a performance of her career, obviously, um, what she did. So the right person was picked. And I think we all knew going in that this was Brie, Brie Larson's, um, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, she was the clear favorite. Like, even Best Actor, people weren't sure. Like, it was most likely going to go to Leo, but no one was sure. Everyone thought maybe Fassbender, maybe Redmayne, but I feel like Best Actress was, like, the one lock, and mm -hmm. Brie Larson was expected to win that, and she did. Shout out to Sacramento. She's from here, mm -hmm. even though I think she was homeschooled. She's, like, the same age. I think she's, like, 24, so me and my buddy from work, he said he looked up what high school she went to and she was homeschooled so there wow. you go but um all right well congratulations brie larson's thank you for representing sacramento um moving on to maybe the most disappointing category from a fan perspective is best supporting actor which went to mark rylance from bridge of spies and look for me i think he was deserving of the nomination he was really good in it. I remember when you and I went and saw the film, and I didn't really think much of it after, but then I started hearing people talk about his performance. I was like, yeah, you know, they're right. He was the standout in that film. He really, you know, brought a, 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 something really cool to that movie that, you know, I, I wasn't getting from anything else in that film, which I liked, but I didn't love uh, Bridge of Spies. But, um, yeah, I personally, I know everyone else wanted, wanted Sylvester Stallone to win. I actually wanted Mark Ruffalo to win, and I was... Similar to the way everyone was rooting for Sylvester, I was rooting for Mark Ruffalo. I think he really deserved it this year. I think he was a lot better than Rylance this year. I I mean, and I would even say Stallone was probably better than Rylance in my opinion. But Rylance won, Gio. This one might put a dagger in your heart the most. What, how do you feel about this? I mean, I don't even think Mark Rylance was deserving of a nomination. I'm not saying his performance wasn't great, but... I mean, there were other actors in supporting roles who I thought did a better job. Um, it 
clearly surprised me when they i thought they were going to mention ruffalo like when i heard mark i thought it was going to be followed by ruffalo but then when it went rylance it's like okay all right now some people might think he deserves the oscar cool all films are su- subjective you know that's your opinion cool but i thought it was honestly between tom hardy and the revenant um uh, mark ruffalo and spotlight and sylvester stallone and creed um I wanted Stallone to win just as, you know, like as, as a fan, I, I was kind of hoping Stallone would win. I think a lot of America was too. Um, if you go on social media, you, you can learn a lot of, about that and see what was going on. But I don't know. Mark Rylance, uh, cool. You know, I mean, congratulations, but I don't think he was the right choice. Yeah, we're not trying to take away from Rylance winning. The Oscar voters obviously thought he was the best supporting actor this year but um from our personal perspectives we definitely thought either stallone or ruffalo should have taken this award home but either way congratulations mark rylance i i thought you gave a great performance so congratulations all right moving on to best supporting actress which has had jennifer jason lee from the hateful late rooney mara from carol rachel mcadams from spotlight kate winslet from steve jobs who was my choice and then alicia vikander from the danish girl who won so this one's interesting because from for me, I had been hearing this before I saw The Danish Girl, but from watching The Danish Girl, I feel like Alicia Vikander is the lead over Eddie Redmayne in that film. She outshined him in that movie. She stole it from him, and she was on screen arguably more than he was. So she should have been in the Best Actress category, but maybe the mo- the you know, the people pushing for her to win this Oscar, the studio promoting her or whatever – submitted her as a supporting actress because they probably were hearing about brie larson oh why are we going to put her in there if she's not gonna have a chance to beat brie larson so let's put her in supporting so it worked out that way she is amazing in the danish girl i think she deserves an oscar but maybe not in this category i would have liked to see maybe kate winslet win but i'm not mad at elisa vikander this was 2015 was her year she broke out on the scene with ex machina uh in the what was the spy movie uh man uh, from man uncle from she uncle. was great in man from uncle mm-hmm. and in that role and then she blew me away in the danish girl so how do you feel about the candor winning this i mean i i've yet to see the danish girl but i wouldn't doubt that her performance was you know incredible uh yeah and you kind of saw glimpses of it you know when they show it you right know, show right the movie. yeah um honestly i mean just off of the movies i've seen i thought it was kate winslet and steve jobs i mean the way she uh played off of fassbender uh from an aaron sorkin script you know was no easy task but Again, I haven't seen The Danish Girl. Um, I'll probably watch it someday. But, uh, you know, uh, Alicia Vikander, she feels like the right choice. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, for the longest time, I thought Kate Winslet was, like, the best performance all year, period. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of changed my tune when, you know, I would probably say either Fassbender or maybe Leo is is that in that case. But Vikander was freaking amazing. I'm not mad at all that she won. So moving on to Best Director. So we got a repeat champion here in Alejandro Gonzalez Inaratu. Won for The Revenant. Again, GR, you glad that he won? Oh, yeah. I'm so glad that he won. I mean, look, I love Mad Max Free Road. You know that. George Miller, he accomplished something incredible at 70 years old. This honestly could have went to any one of these directors. But I feel like The Revenant, the nine month shoot the remote locations natural light the performances he got out of not just tom hardy and leo but you know a will poulter Dom hall gleason you know all those actors right there um i thought it was just a cinema achievement and i think that's why he got it over everyone else was because you know the film might not have been as great as birdman but you just look at the uh the technical stuff the actors performances it's it's an achievement and i feel like he was I felt like they got it right. Yeah, I I'm not mad that he won. I I liked The Revenant. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's best picture material, but there's no denying that direction in this movie is brilliant. And that's what this award is for is best director. I honestly could have seen any of these directors winning this category. Adam McKay did a great job with the big short. George Miller, you cannot take away what he did with Mad Max. That to bring so much energy at his age is amazing and room and spotlight i love those movies so yeah I, i'm not mad at if anyone would have won this award but i'm i'm glad that Inaratu won it he's dominating two years in a row man killing it all right well let's uh talk about some of the other categories really quick just run through some of the smaller ones so we so those are the top six categories in my opinion so we had best adapted screenplay the big short one i was glad to see that win because if anything from that movie the script is incredible the way that story was told, they simplified it as much as they could. 
there's only so much you can do, and I thought it did a great job. Deserve deserve this win. Do you, you think so? Yeah, I think it was a smart screenplay. Um, just the way they try to, you know, explain everything, exposition. They did it in a kind of clever way with the fourth wall breaking, bringing in celebrity cameos and all that kind of stuff. And then the montages of like you know the real life footage of like the um, housing markets, the the media coverage of all this stuff happening. I thought it was you know really well done. Yeah, and it was really cool how they how they showed the screenplay nominations. Remember how they would show the the wordings of the scripts mm-hmm. on the screen, and then have they would have a voice read it. It was that was really cool. If you yeah. didn't watch the Oscars, it was really cool how they presented the writing categories. Yeah, I. I'm totally happy with the Big Short winning Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, and now you have the Best Original Screenplay, which went to Spotlight, which now when you think about it, it was an indicator that I was going to win Best Picture. So you had it win Best Original Screenplay and Best Picture. I I can't be happier for Spotlight. It deserves both of these awards so very much. How do you feel about Spotlight winning Best Original Screenplay? Oh, I, I, I very much agree with it. You know, um, The story of the Boston Globe and how they – you know, handled all all the uh, the controversy going on with the churches. Um, I thought the sources that they pulled from it was all great. Um, the writing was excellent. the The dialogue, you know, is really stands out to me. You know what the what these uh, actors and actresses were saying. They didn't hold back from the controversy, so that was great. And I I think the the right choice was made. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I I'm so happy Spotlight got the recognition it does, and hopefully a lot more people see it. After winning Best Picture, which usually happens, it'll probably get another theater run, which I'm not mad at at all. All right, so let's let's talk about Best Visual Effects a little bit. A little bit of a surprise, Ex Machina won, which I'm – I love Ex Machina. Other than Star Wars and Ant-Man, Ex Machina was my favorite movie last year, and I would have liked to have seen it nominated for Best Picture. I would have liked to have seen it maybe win Best Original Screenplay, but it took away something which – now that I think about it, it, was phenomenal the special effects and the way how they showed it when they presented the when they were showing the nominees, you could see how you know how they had to translate the, you know what they were filming the and rendering. create the yeah. robot and everything. So it did such a great job. I would all of these movies deserve to win best visual effects, but I'm happy that Ex Machina got some recognition. How about you, Gio? Yeah, it just uh, it didn't really cross my mind that Ex Machina would win until they actually showed us you know um, all the rendering and stuff that went on. Um, it's just one of those cases of quality over quantity where these other films had like much more to show for visual That's very effects. true. That's very true. But Ex Machina really hit where it needed to. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I I think just because it was so original and it was like true real sci-fi and it had that, that feel to it, we, we don't get movies like that anymore. And it was such a pleasant surprise this year. Um, so even though we've only seen – one movie in this category. I just want to talk about Inside Out winning Best Animated Category. Uh, I believe Inside Out, along with Ex Machina, should have been nominated for Best Picture. And, you know, we, we have this issue with the Academy, one of the issues with the Academy, that they they rarely nominate Best... They rarely nominate animated films for Best Picture since they have the Best Animated Category. They're like, oh, just give it there. And there's not... You know, there's not that many animated feature films made each year. You know, there's you know there's less than less than a hundred, I would say, wide release like full length animated features. So while while there's a thousand or ten thousand live action movies that come out every year, so uh, they kind of have a cop out category with this. But I'm just glad it got the recognition, and that was really clever how they had Woody and Buzz from Toy Story introduce the category. Uh, Gio, I know you loved Inside Out. Are you happy to see it win? Yeah, I mean, the power of Pixar is just too strong for all these other movies. You know, they, not, not taking anything away from them, but, you know, Inside Out was just, you know, an achievement of, uh, in itself. You know, the original concept that they came up with, the execution, the the design, the, the colorful, all, all that kind of stuff, you know, the, the idea of emotions in our head you know it's just it's amazing and had this been you know like cars 2 or something (laughs) else you know i think uh the other uh animated films would have had a much more uh you know closer shot at winning but i mean inside out it it just happened to be one of pixar's you know best yeah i think it's gonna with time it's gonna be right up there with some of the best of pixar's films um yeah we I'm interested to see some of the other uh, nominations in animation, like Anna Lisa and then Shaun the Sheep. I heard was pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't even heard of the other ones. Like one, I think one's called Marnie was there, and then something else. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, and there's no way for us to really see these movies. They're not they're getting wide release. I know Anna Melissa was in theaters for like a week here in Sacramento, and I wouldn't, I wanted to see it. And when I went to go check to go see if it was playing again, it was gone out of theaters in a week. So, it, it's unfortunate that we don't have a chance to really see these films. But good job, Inside Out. I'm very happy that you won. Good job, Pete Doctor. Good job, Pixar. So that's pretty much going to wrap up our Oscar recap show. Gio, I want to ask, was there anything else regarding the Oscars that stood out to you? Any any other things that you wanted to talk about? Um, Just Emmanuel Lubsky getting a three-peat with the cinematography. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Gravity, yeah. Birdman, and The Revenant. Yeah, you know? that's that's like, freaking phenomenal. Just... How about Morricano winning best score? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, incredible. I would have loved to see John Williams win, but Morricano – how great is that hateful eight score man mm-hmm. we talked about it some wasn't it your favorite score of the year yeah yeah it yeah was. I, I i can't argue about that man it was a great score so yeah of course there's a bunch of other categories but these were the main ones that we wanted to talk about you know the most coveted ones i'm just happy i'm most happy about spotlight winning best picture and leo finally getting his oscar congratulations leo us at Apocalypse movies not that you're listening congratulate you we applaud you you really deserve it especially throughout your career now go and get four more man please all right i want to thank geo for joining me today man where can they find you online you guys can find me on twitter at geo ramos 24 and on apocfixmovies.com and you can find me jacob bartley on twitter at jacob bartley underscore you can find me on this youtube channel apocflix movies on apocfixmovies.com please subscribe to our youtube channel please hit that like button and you know Celebrate movies, celebrate the Oscars, congratulate these hard-working actors, actresses, directors, writers, all these people that – this is what the Oscars is about, celebrating film, the films that we all love. And put all the controversy aside and just appreciate Hollywood and appreciate films. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time.